Let's say you want to pretend you're Bruce Lee with his lightning fast punches and kicks. Not surprisingly, there's a frame for that. Or if you want to roleplay as Juggernaut, smashing everything in your path and causing mayhem, there's a frame for that too, obviously. But let's say you love K-pop and the way they throw up gang signs while being useless and cute. Wait, there's actually a frame for that? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. What if you're a huge fan of Michael Portnoy, aka Soy Bomb, the guy who crashed Bob Dylan's performance at the 1998 Grammys by shedding his outer layer and convulsing like a total spaz? Surely there's no... Okay, but Zaku is so much more than an obscure pop culture relic. And with his infinite scaling damage, evasion, move speed, and shield slash armor strip, he may just be your new go-to frame. If you happen to be Bob Dylan, I can understand you setting this one out. But for the rest of you, this is Hardcore Endgame. Okwa Tanzin Wan, my people, and welcome to the Hardcore Endgame build guide for Zaku. Before I get started, I was told that I should take a moment to recognize a major milestone. The channel recently hit 1337 subscribers. Hi! I'll be honest, I've always felt that milestone celebrations are self-serving and somewhat obnoxious, but a wise seven-year-old told me that it can just be about thanking people and not so much about showing off. So thank you to everyone who's taken the time to subscribe or comment or recommend my content to clanmates and friends, but also to anyone who's even watched one of my videos. As a new creator for an old game, I was just hoping people would give my content a chance, so I'm genuinely blown away by how supportive everyone has been. As I've said, if you keep watching, I'll keep making. So let's see where things go from here. For right now, we're going to the build requirements. All of Zaku's component blueprints are rewards and Cambion Drift bounties on Deimos. If you don't know what that is, you probably still need to complete the Heart of Deimos questline, which is where his main blueprint comes from anyway. As usual, an Orkin reactor is required. Arcanes are not, but Arcane Energize is strongly recommended and a Helminth swap is also strongly recommended, but you have a bunch of options to choose from. My specific build requires four total Forma, none of which are Umbra, but there's some flexibility, so your results may vary. All right, let's talk about everyone's favorite fractured anomaly, Zaku. When he was released, Zaku wasn't what you would call good, and I wouldn't have really recommended using him for, well, anything really. Don't touch it, put it down, put it down. But since then, he's been torn down, reworked, buffed, and reassembled into an extremely solid unit, despite his flimsy appearance. He now specializes in steel path missions, endurance runs, and high-level content in general, and there are two major reasons for this. Scaling damage and armor strip. Scaling damage comes from his two, Grasp of Loke, which steals weapons from nearby enemies and then uses them in a floating arsenal around Zaku. The damage of these weapons is determined by a simple formula, which uses three multipliers. The ability's base void damage, your total ability strength, and the level of enemy the weapon was stolen from. It's like having a mesa in your pocket who gets stronger as the enemies get tougher. Sorry to disappoint all the Gunslinger fanboys who came here looking for an actual pocket mesa. Have this body pillow instead. You can have as many as 16 stolen weapons active at once, depending on ability range, and they auto-target enemies while firing 1.2 shots per second. Note that grasped weapons deal void damage, as neither physical nor elemental. This means that it receives no increase or decrease based on weakness or resistance, such as those related to health, armor, shield type, but also sortie modifiers. Great. I think I got it, but just in case, tell me the whole thing again, I wasn't listening. <sighs> Alright, think of it this way. Impact damage, for example, is increased by 25% versus machinery, but decreased by 25% versus cloned flesh. Void damage is never affected in this way, so it deals the same damage across the board. Zaku's third ability, the Lost, has three sub-abilities, but Gaze is the one we're focusing on, as it provides both shield and armor strip. Aiming at a bad guy while casting the ability causes them to become trapped and immune to damage. During this time, they emit a debuff, which removes a percentage of current shields and armor from enemies within its radius. If you've watched other episodes of Hardcore Endgame, you've heard me talk about how it's absolutely mandatory to deal with armor on high-level enemies. I recommend it, and use it. With just 200% total ability strength, Gaze strips 100% of armor and shields, leaving nearby enemies practically defenseless. 
You might expect all of this damage to be offset by a lack of survivability. And Zaku does lack traditional means, such as high health, armor, shields, or damage reduction. His passive, however, provides both a 25% reduction to AoE damage and a 25% chance to completely dodge incoming attacks. And both of these values are raised to 75% while his 4, the Vast Untime, is active. This means he's nearly immune to incoming damage while running around naked, similar to the way Will Ferrell is 100% immune to incoming disgust while doing so. We're good, streaky! Streaking also gives Zaku a 20% move speed bonus, and the explosion it creates upon activation damages nearby enemies, making them 50% more vulnerable to void damage, and reduces their action speed by 25%. But I haven't even gotten to the best part of this ability. While it's active, all of Zaku's other ability timers are paused. Yeah, this means that continually refreshing the Vast on Time will allow you to keep grasp of Lok and Gaze instances active far beyond their actual duration. Since you can manually cancel the Vast on Time and then immediately recast it, the length of its cast animation will be the only time you lose on those other counters. Unfortunately, this effect doesn't carry over to abilities transferred onto Zaku via Helmet, but that shouldn't stop you from using something anyway, as there are many strong options. I like Harrow's Condemn for instant CC and Shield Refresh when I'm surrounded. Gara's Spectro Rage also provides CC, and if you want to make space for its Spectro Siphon Augment, will keep your energy topped off for... ever. Nege's Firewalker, Titania's Spellbind, or Helmuth's own Hideous Resistance are great options if you want to avoid CC yourself, and Octavia's Resonator, or Saren's Molt, can provide a distraction to draw enemy attention away from Zaka. Mess around, experiment, find something that grapples your apples, and go nuts. That's not to say his default one, Zadus Whisper, is a bad ability by any means. It infuses your weapons with void damage as a percentage of each weapon's total damage, and it exists as a separate instance, meaning it won't dilute the weapon's existing damage type split. It benefits from the weapon's status chance, and void status creates a 5 meter wide attraction bubble centered on the hit location, drawing all bullets which hit the bubble, even those from enemies, to the body part it's centered on. For weapons with high accuracy and status chance, Headshots that proc void status can be incredibly deadly due to the headshot multiplier, as well as the additional status proc for mods like Galvanized Aptitude, Galvanized Savvy, and Galvanized Shot. But Grasp of Loke already provides so much damage from all its weapons. Holy sh I prefer swapping Zada's Whisper out for some utility. Time to look over the build, and I apologize to all my fellow spreadsheet enthusiasts and math nerds out there. Zaku's ability calculations are fairly straightforward which means there's no nerd alert this episode. I'm disappointed, not terribly, but still. As I mentioned earlier, this build is fairly flexible, and that starts right at the top with our Aura mod. I recommend using either Energy Siphon to assist with energy issues Zaku can run into, or Sprint Boost for the obvious utility. Both mods also benefit from matching Zaku's native polarity. Growing power is a great option, but will require an additional formula to fit it in. In the x slot, I have Cunning Drift for movement speed and range, but you'll need to switch this to Power Drift if you're using Normal Intensify instead of the Umbral version and still want to maintain 200% ability strength and the 100% armor and shield strip it provides. Grasp of Loke weapons will target enemies 20 meters away with this setup, but if you find a need for even more range, you can sacrifice some duration by swapping out Augur Message for Augur Reach. As for what I'd strongly recommend not swapping out, Overextended and Stretch give us the range that all of our abilities take advantage of with the former fitting into one of Zaku's native depolarities. Blind Rage and Augur Secrets are required to get us to the 200% strength required for full armor and shield strip. Primed Flow with Arcane Energize is the best way to deal with our low efficiency, considering Fleeting Expertise isn't an option due to its negative duration, and Streamline won't even get us back to 100%. Finally, Primed Continuity gives the Vast on Time, and whatever we put in our first ability, a duration that is perfectly manageable even if you decide to forego Augur Message. And there's your build guide. One last thing, actually, but only if you're Bob Dylan. Everybody else can leave, okay? Go ahead. All right, Mr. Dylan, sir, I'm actually a huge fan and I'm sorry for bringing up that incident. Honestly, I had no idea you even played Warframe. Hit me up in game, all right? We'll run some relics together, tenant weapons, farm arcanes, whatever you need, I'll help with it. I'm up for it. It's the least I can do. God, I feel terrible now. <laughs>